Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Sister Wives with Mary Jane Kay. Today, I'll be giving my commentary on Sister Wives, Season 19, Episode 4, How the Mighty Have Fallen. The episode opens with Christine in Salt Lake. She is visiting the twins. McKelty is recovering from her C-section and Robin is there. She was very helpful the first night and we learn that she slept in the closet. Apparently, it's a huge closet, and that was the most convenient way for Robin to help McKelty and wake her in the night to do the feedings and stuff. So, Isabel stops by to visit her nephews, and Janelle is really grateful that Robin could be there for McKelty and that Robin was helpful. Janelle recalls Logan's birth. Christine had first joined the family around that time, and Christine took Logan for a whole night, and Janelle really appreciated it. She could rest knowing that Logan was safe. So Janelle feels that Robin's help in this situation was invaluable. And Janelle knows they all hope to be able to come together one day, that they can all co-parent the kids when the dust settles one day. So we learn that Avalon is having some trouble getting adjusted to not being the center of the world anymore with the twins' birth. So everything has changed for Avalon, and it's much harder for her to adjust. Christine understands, of course, and she knows Avalon is going to need a lot of extra attention because it went from just her being the center of McKelty and Tony's world to her and now these twins. It's a big adjustment. So Thanksgiving is in less than a week, and Christine is cooking Thanksgiving dinner. McKelty is hosting at her house. Christine will be cooking. And it's not about the food for Christine this year. It's about the cuddles with the new babies. So Robin intends to have a really good relationship with Christine one day, and she hopes that her helping with McKelty leaves a foundation for positivity with Christine. Christine feels awkward with Robin. They're not on the best of terms, and she knows it's stupid to feel awkward, that it shouldn't be awkward. She knows it's not all about her, but it still feels awkward for her. McKelty mentions that she knows it's a difficult dynamic between Robin and her mom, and she knows her family is going through a tough transition, but McKelty feels that it says a lot about both Robin and Christine's characters that they set all of their shit aside just for her. Cody explains that the family is in a weird place because of the divorces and the division and the struggles. And he says the struggles now because of all this divorce, the struggles in the family are so foreign to him from what the family was, from what the family used to be. Robin gushes over the sweet experience with McKelty and the twins, and she says she loves being a grandma. But Cody has a very difficult time connecting with his kids, and he feels the twins' birth will be healing, and it might even move things forward with the relationships with his kids. Cody doesn't know if it will heal things with his ex-wives, but he knows he's going to visit his grandkids, the twins, and he hopes that the twins open the door for him with all of his kids. In my opinion, Cody pretending to be invested in his grandkids, making a big show about visiting the twins, that's not going to change shit with his kids. If Cody really wants to move forward and open doors with his kids, it will take accountability and effort with each of his kids individually. It's not going to take showboating and TLC cameras. Cody still doesn't understand the extent of the damage he did to his kids, to his ex-wives, with his own toxic behavior. He has zero self-awareness. He has zero situational awareness. And, you know, just seeing his kids holding his grandkids, that's not going to do it. The kids want honesty. They want accountability. They want admissions of their father's mistakes. And they want Cody to have an understanding of how his behavior affected them, how they were hurt by this, how they were affected by his neglect and his toxicity, by his mental instability, they want to know, I know I made you feel this way. I'm sorry. I know my behavior caused it. I know I hurt you. I'm sorry for that. But Cody doesn't feel that way. Cody's the victim. They all betrayed him. So it's now Thanksgiving, and the Brown family is divided. Cody is in Flagstaff with Robin and their kids, and this is Cody's and Robin's first Thanksgiving with just their kids alone. Some of the Browns are in Vegas at Logan's house with Janelle. Christine's son Peyton is there as well, and the rest of the kids 
are in Salt Lake at McKelty's house with Christine. Mary had planned to go to California for Thanksgiving, but it fell through. So Robin invited Mary to go to their house and Mary declined. Mary says it's weird to be there. And Cody explains that Mary came to their Thanksgiving last year and it was pleasant, but he had issues with it because he and Robin don't act like a married couple with any of the ex-sister wives around or with Mary around because Robin likes to be respectful of her ex-sister wives. She likes to be sensitive to it, so she tells Cody to lay off the affection. So when Mary was around last Thanksgiving, they weren't being very romantic and affectionate with each other, and Cody didn't feel comfortable not being able to express his affection. Mary really cramped Cody's style. Cody felt distant when Mary was there. He didn't feel close with Mary. He didn't feel like he could be close with Robin when Mary is present. And Robin likes to be really sensitive to Mary. So Cody felt very inhibited. And Mary has heard Cody say many times how awkward it is for Mary to even be there because then he can't show the affection and adoration to Robin that he wants to. So Mary doesn't want to inhibit Cody. And she feels she isn't a member of that family anymore. So she doesn't want to be a third wheel at Robin and Cody's house. She doesn't feel welcome. Mary sacrificed a lot for Robin. She gave up her legal marriage. She gave up a lot for Cody and Robin. Why does Cody have to be all over Robin all the time? Why is it so inhibiting for him to be respectful of everyone around him? Why does he have to slap Robin's ass or make out with her and be touchy-feely all the time? He could handle to act like a human being, to have class and respect. Mary doesn't feel welcome because Cody is saying he can't be affectionate to Robin. And maybe she doesn't feel welcome anyway. But she loves Robin's kids. She probably would have loved to be there if she knew Cody didn't have that issue. Cody's a dick. Cody is a dick. And Robin probably can't wait for Cody to keep his fucking hands off of her. Cody seems obsessed with Robin and their love. And Robin kind of seems like she's really not that into Cody. You could tell she's losing respect for him. She's getting sick of him. And when she gets sick enough, she will throw that man under the bus and take all his coins, half his coins, as a legal wife. Robin mentions that she really loves her kids and they are all really enjoying their holiday but she misses the family and she misses the big experience of Thanksgiving. So they flash back to a full house in Vegas back in 2016, and they used to have at least 50 people over each year for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was never a small affair. So Janelle says they started the family with the vision of having one family. Even when Robin came along, they tried so hard to maintain that one family identity. Janelle never imagined that they would not ever spend the holiday together. She enjoys the smaller Thanksgiving, though, with people she wants to be with, with people who want to be with her. She's really enjoying it. She's having a lot of fun. Cody is struggling with the smaller Thanksgiving. He says there are just seven of them at Robin's house. It feels off. It feels weird for him. It feels like something is missing. Cody says it's too quiet, but it feels safe for him. And by safe, he means that they are all in a state of respect with each other. He says a decade ago, he was safe for everybody, but they weren't safe for each other. And he says it shows him the dysfunction of the basics in plural marriage. Listen, plural marriage isn't the easiest or healthiest lifestyle choice, but Cody wants to blame the difficulties among the sister wives and the difficulties in his family and in his marriage for why polygamy didn't work. He primarily blames the difficulties among the sister wives for why polygamy didn't work in his case, that he was the safe place, that he was the glue, but no one got along with each other. That's how Cody sees it, when in reality, we know his wives didn't feel safe with him. They didn't feel heard. They didn't feel seen. They never felt like enough. They never felt like they mattered to him. And in plural marriage, success of a plural family is largely dependent on the husband, his personality type, and him being fair and equal across the board, investing time, money, and attention equally with each 
household with each wife and her kids. Now, when Cody failed to do that with all of his wives, that exacerbated the issues among the sister wives, between the sister wives and Cody. So Cody can blame plural marriage, but really he was a toxic, absent husband in three places while he was fully invested at the favorite wife's house. That's not polygamy's fault. That's not the sister wife's fault. That's on Cody as the plural husband. Cody, when he married each of these women, he signed up for this. He signed up to be a plural husband and father. He signed up to promising to do his best to do things fairly and equally among his wives across the board. He signed up to always prioritize the larger family, not himself, not a favorite wife, not one marriage while ignoring three others. Cody signed up for fair and equal and he picked a favorite wife and he made it blatantly obvious. That's on Cody. That's not on polygamy. So Janelle heard that Mary isn't spending the holiday at Robin. So she was really surprised by that and she wonders where Mary will be. She hopes Mary won't be alone. So Janelle mentions that she thinks Mary deserves a lot more and that it's time for her to do something different. And Janelle has felt that for a long time, but at this point, Mary is still around. And we learn Mary isn't telling anybody about her decision to end things with Cody, not even her ex sister wives. She doesn't want to make a big announcement. So she is staying in town for Thanksgiving. She's having an easy day. She's getting caught up on work. And Mary feels, logic says that when a man and a woman decide they aren't going to be married any longer, they also therefore don't spend Thanksgiving together. Cody could easily still welcome Mary as the mother of his kid, but he's a dick. Cody made it clear that it cramped his style to have Mary around, and when she's around, he has to rein in the affection at Robin's request to be sensitive to Mary, to be sensitive to his ex-wives. So Cody made it so Mary felt like she was imposing on him with her presence there. Now, Christine says... Thanksgiving is about the babies, it's about the family, and Cody wants his other kids in his life, and he doesn't know how to do that, but he says he has faith and hope that things get better in the future. It takes more than faith and hope. It takes Cody taking accountability, taking action, opening communication. Cody doesn't want to inconvenience himself to do that. So Mary was very sick on Thanksgiving and Robin found out that Mary was homesick for Thanksgiving. So we learned that after Mary talked to Cody in April, she decided she wasn't going to go to Robin's. She feels uncomfortable there and Cody makes her feel like she is imposing and infringing on them because he can't be as affectionate as he wants to be. Robin probably would welcome that reprieve. At this point, Christine doesn't know what is going on with Mary and Cody's relationship. She heard that they were separated, but she doesn't know where Mary is living or what's going on in Mary's life because she doesn't talk to Mary. Next, over dramatic music, viewers are told that shortly before cameras arrived for filming in Flagstaff at the Goblin's Lair, Cody and Robin had a heated exchange. Tensions escalated, so Kotex took a drive. This whole thing felt very scripted by the way. So Robin is getting, at this point in my opinion, really sick and tired of all that best customer service. I think this woman is getting fed up with cooking the ego feasts. The difference with Robin versus the other wives is when Cody turns on her, Robin will push this man all the way under the bus. And legally, she has a right to half the coins so she can leave anytime she wants without worrying about her children, her assets, or financial security. Now, Cody explains that he and Robin had a conversation after he dropped the kids at school, and Robin is pissed that Cody isn't reaching out to his kids. Now, in my opinion, Robin is doing this because she wants to have some positivity with the viewers. In my opinion, it's too little, too late, and I don't think she really gives a fuck about the kids. Robin explains that they fought because she was pressuring Cody to work on the relationships with his kids. So she really wants Cody to reach out more, to try much harder. And so Cody was triggered and Cody got upset and Cody says it all came to a head. They raised voices. They were shouting at each other and Cody didn't want to fight with Robin. He didn't want to have a rift in their relationship. 
caused by these other people who he claims have created the biggest rift in his life. He says he refuses to fight with Robin. So Cody isn't a victim. Cody keeps pitying himself, playing the world's tiniest violin for himself, and it's pathetic. These other people, the people he refers to as these other people, are his family, and they didn't create a rift in Cody's life. Let's remember, Cody did this to himself. Cody burned his relationships with who he claims are these other people, with his kids, with his ex-wives. He burned the relationships to the ground with his toxic behavior. Cody caused the rift in his life with his abusive behavior. Now, Cody refers to his other kids and his ex-wives as these other people. He's using distancing language when they are his family. They are his blood. They aren't these other people, others separate from him on some other team. Cody alienated himself. Cody created the rift, and he blames them for what he did himself with his own hands, with his own bad behavior. Cody, in my opinion, allegedly is a very sick man with zero grasp on reality and with no ability to take accountability. He has zero self-awareness. He's delusional. He's incredibly unintelligent. And I've seen dogs with much more intelligence and emotional intelligence than Kotex has at 50 plus. It's pathetic. Cody is pathetic. Even Robin is making it clear that she's losing respect for him. I don't believe Robin is pushing Cody to do the right thing with his kids because she gives a fuck about the kids. I think she is really just doing this to try and get viewer support. And whether she says the right words or not, it's hollow. It's all hollow. It's all lip service. And it's way too little, too late. It's really sick that Cody thinks his family caused this rift. Let's not forget, I mentioned this like a broken record every episode. What did Cody say? What did he say? He wanted to free himself from his obstacles to his goals in life, to achieve his goals. His family were the obstacles impeding him from achieving his goals, his goal of monogamy with his favorite wife. Now, Cody saw his family as obstacles, as a hindrance to what he wanted in life, as a roadblock to what was most convenient for him, a monogamous life with Robin, where he could be coddled and ego-fed, where Robin makes him feel like the hero who saved her and her children for the rest of his life. In the end, Cody is going to find out Robin got what she wanted, and that obedience, that feigned respect she gives him, that was all customer service. She customer service the fuck out of Cody to manage him and to get what she wanted for herself and her kids. And when Cody realizes not only that Robin doesn't respect him, but that she has basically been managing him this whole time, that all she was providing was a hero fantasy, and that she won't hesitate to throw him under the bus and drain his bank account in the process, when Cody realizes that, Cody's head is going to explode. And at that point, Cody will call his kids and he will have his hope and he'll have his faith, but hope and faith won't solve his problems. Hope and faith won't solve Cody's relationships. Cody refuses to put in effort. He refuses to take accountability. So when the shit hits the fan and he calls his kids who will refuse his calls, they'll block his number, Cody will realize then all he'll have left is himself. And Cody is his own worst enemy. If Cody has tension in his relationship with Robin, it's not caused by his family. It's not caused by anyone but him and his behavior. Robin is tired of the constant lip service and the ego feeding, and she will gradually continue to lose respect for him. Then she will just detest him. And when Robin stops feeding Cody's ego, when she just can't anymore, Cody will have nothing left but the shell of a person he is. It's pathetic. Cody truly is a victim of himself. So after this argument, Cody took a drive. He wanted to cool down after the fight. And Cody is now coming home and Robin wants to talk more. And she really wants the message to sink in that Cody needs to try harder with his kids. Robin says it's eating at her and she is very worried about the kids. 
You know, where was this concern years ago when it mattered most? Robin is only concerned now for the way this looks on her, in my opinion. She seems to want to try to manage the way we perceive her. She wants to manage her image. Where was all this concern when it counted for the family? Cody is in a very emotional state. He's thinking about what Robin said. He comes back and Robin asks Cody if they can talk more about this. So Cody agrees to talk, but he mentions that he's triggered and this whole thing with his kids, that's his trigger point. Poor Cody, guys. Oh, he's triggered. Oh. Now, Cody is tired of being angry. And Robin is sick of it, too. She says it's hard. Cody is tired of feeling betrayed. And he says, in the divorces, that ugly finger of blame has come out. And his kids tell him, Dad, you were never around. Dad, you were never at my house. And Cody says he had four wives. He was there. But then the other wife would complain that he was there and he would have to go and please this one and please that one and blah, blah, blah. So Robin doesn't understand why Cody isn't talking to his kids as much as he can. She doesn't know why Cody isn't trying harder, why Cody isn't reaching out more. Cody says for so long, his kids and his ex-wives have been trash talking him. And Robin explains that the kids are hurting they're hurting, they're in pain, they're suffering. And Cody says that Robin saw how the kids were at the wedding. Many of the kids avoided Cody. Cody says the whole family was there at the wedding and there was so much animosity from a lot of his family. Some kids even refused to even talk to him. Cody bitches that some of the kids flat out rejected him. Apparently, he was in the same area of the wedding as Maddie, and Maddie moved her kids away from him. Now, Cody whines that Maddie didn't even tell him that she was pregnant. So, Cody is so selfish. He makes everything about himself, how he feels about his pain, about the betrayal, the thing done to him, as if this was done to him, and he claims that his kids reject him. His kids are demanding what they deserve from their father. And some of his kids don't want a relationship with Cody until he can take accountability and admit his mistakes and admit how his toxicity affected them. And until Cody can do that and until Cody can invest consistently, they don't want him around. And that's completely understandable. If you're an adult and you have a parent who cannot give you what you deserve, you have every right to cut the relationship with them completely and set boundaries until they're able to take accountability and give you what you deserve if they're ever able to do that. They may never be able to do that, and that's completely fine. But the kids have every right to say, I do not want a relationship with you. Cody has zero emotional intelligence. He has zero self-awareness, and his feelings always take priority over the way anyone else might feel. He doesn't have any ability for empathy or compassion. Cody's feelings always take priority. His emotions take priority. His rejection, his hurt, his bruised ego, the betrayal he feels, all of that takes precedence over him taking accountability, understanding the emotions of his children, and rebuilding the relationships with his kids by truly putting in the work and the humility and the communication. If Cody took accountability, if he was genuinely remorseful, if he set his ego aside, if he made efforts consistently with his kids, things might open up for some of the relationships. But Cody is the one who lit the match. Cody is the one who burned his family to the ground. And Cody will have to put in a lot of work, time, effort, and inconvenience to even nudge the doors open. He can rely all he wants on time, hope, and faith. What he needs to do is get off his ass and try and try and try again. And he also needs to get help, in my opinion, for his mental state. Cody really needs to prioritize his kids' pain, the hurt he caused them, his kids' emotional states, their suffering that he caused with his neglect. Cody needs to make the effort to own how he contributed to that. He needs to own that he understands how his kids feel. The kids aren't shit-talking about him. They are telling truths that are way too inconvenient for Cody to hear. Now, if Cody wants to rely on hope and faith, 
All he's going to get from these kids are crickets. He rejected them for so long. He was neglectful for so long. And now, naturally, they want nothing to do with him with good reason. And he wants to bitch that he was rejected by them. Who rejected who first? Who was rejected first? Cody, as a father, rejected his kids. And Cody is still making excuses. His kids are telling him their issues. You weren't around. You this, you that. And Cody still refuses to validate how they feel. He refuses to take accountability for it. And he still makes excuses. He blames his four ex-wives. He blames polygamy. He blames everything and everyone but himself. I don't think the kids are going to accept anything but Cody owning his toxic behavior. And I think they really need to hear Cody own his mistake. They need him to say he knows this is on his shoulders and he, he needs to stop making these bullshit excuses, blaming his wives or this or that for why he wasn't present in the homes with his kids, for why he wasn't invested with all his kids. They don't want to hear excuses. They want to hear Cody take direct accountability. Cody perpetually pointing fingers outward. Cody refusing to accept responsibility himself. That's what the problem is. Cody refuses to own anything. Cody doesn't want to get in the weeds and talk about it and communicate and work the issues out with the kids. He doesn't want to do the work. He doesn't want to talk about these things. He just wants to wait on hope and faith and time. He wants to make zero effort and he wants to just hope the kids just flock back to his feet because Cody is delusional. Cody is lazy and Cody is stupid. Now, Janelle says the kids are upset with the way Cody has treated his family, ditching them. The kids feel ditched, and they have every right to feel that way. Cody was very neglectful. The kids want Cody to own that. The kids want Cody to address that and stop making excuses. They want him to address his absence and his lack of investment with them, and they want him to own it instead of pointing the finger at their moms or on other things. Cody refuses to do it, and until he sets his ego aside and just does this, nothing will change with the relationships. It's pathetic that this man thinks he was the one betrayed and that he is still blaming his ex-wives when he is the one who caused this. I've really never seen a bigger fool. Maddie doesn't have any contact with Cody. She is very protective of her kids, and Cody hasn't been around since Evie was born three and a half years ago. He's not around consistently, so Maddie doesn't want her kids to be confused about Cody or who he is. If Cody can't consistently be present on a regular basis with his grandkids, she doesn't want him around. She doesn't want the kids confused or disappointed or hurt by Cody. Now, Cody feels it's a very unrealistic expectation for grandparents to always be in their grandkids' lives. No, it's not. Listen, I loved my grandparents to death. My grandparents lived in France. They came multiple times a year to America to be with us for weeks and weeks and weeks. I loved my grandfather dearly. He's probably my favorite person in my family. I will always love that man. He flew from wherever he was internationally to be with us multiple times a year. And he did that with everybody in the family. So it's bullshit that Cody's complaining that it's an unrealistic expectation for grandparents to always be in their grandkids' lives. My grandparents lived in Europe and they were here multiple times a year. Multiple times a year, they came to stay for extended periods of time with us. I knew them very well. I loved them very much. They were always consistently in our lives. They would fly across the world to be with us. Cody says it's an unrealistic expectation for grandparents to always be in their kids' lives, in their grandkids' lives, especially if they live on another coast. My grandpa could fly from France multiple times a year. Living on another coast is nothing. If Cody really cared, if he really loves his grandkids, he would find a way to be there at least twice a year. Now, Cody complains that he has work, he has a life in Flagstaff, he can't be busy with his grandkids. He can't visit them regularly. And he says the kids are purposefully leaving him out of their lives to punish him for a crime he did not commit. And Cody says the only crime he is guilty of is not falling madly in love with the children's mothers.
Now, Cody is very sick in the head, in my opinion. He has a very unhealthy mental state. And Cody is so delusional that he thinks his kids are refusing to have relationships with him just because they're pissed that Cody isn't with their moms in love with their moms. It has zero to do with that. Cody keeps projecting. He keeps deflecting. The mothers have nothing to do with this. They have zero to do with this. Cody needs to understand these are adult kids. They have their own personal individual issues with their dad separate from anything that has to do with their moms or his relationship with their moms. And Cody blaming the moms for why the adult kids reject him only shows how unaware he is and the lack of a grasp on reality. It makes the kids even more alienated from him. They want even less to do with their dad because he invalidates the issues they have with him. They bring these issues up to Cody and Cody needs to address his kids' issues individually head on. He needs to take accountability and he needs to see each relationship he has with each kid as a separate entity between he and his kid rather than him seeing the relationships as being through the mothers of the kids. These are adult kids who have issues with their dad that are completely separate from Cody and his relationships with their moms. Cody needs to understand and validate these children and the issues they have with him rather than minimizing that and deflecting and blaming other things. Cody's delusional. No one is intentionally punishing him by rejecting him or by leaving him out. They're rejecting him, wanting nothing to do with him because they don't even know who he is anymore. He was very emotionally abusive. He was very toxic. He was very neglectful. He was very manipulative. And rather than Cody taking accountability and ownership and validating their issues, he just chalks it up to them being mad about their moms. And Cody views the kids and the relationships with them through the relationships he has with his ex-wives and how much he resents them. And then he gets paranoid and he imagines everyone is trying to punish him intentionally when he is the one who rejected them, referring to them as the obstacles to his goals in life, his family. So this is all bullshit. This is all projection. This is all complete delusion. Until Cody takes full accountability, nothing is going to change in the relationships with his kids. Cody says that Maddie called Janelle to tell her, listen, dad said he didn't love you. And Robin wants Cody to reach out to Maddie. And Cody says when he talks to Maddie, she spreads gossip about him to the rest of the family. And Cody says he never said he'd never loved Janelle. He says he said he loved her, but it's a family rumor that Maddie started that sowed division in the family. And he says the family was killed by gossip. So now it's Maddie's fault that the family is ruined. Anyone but him, right? The family wasn't destroyed by gossip. No, no, no. The family was destroyed by Cody's neglect, by Cody's selfishness, by Cody's emotional abuse, by Cody's toxic behavior, by Cody's manipulation. The family was destroyed when Cody prioritized the favorite wife and her kids over the rest of the family. He intentionally pushed out all of his wives since, in his faith, he could not divorce or leave them. And then he neglected his kids. And you know, Cody killed the family the day he stopped viewing his family as a blessing, the day he started viewing them as the obstacle to his goals in life, Cody killed his family himself. And now he wants to point fingers and blame them for his crime. It's very interesting to me that Cody keeps bitching that his kids intentionally punish him. They intentionally leave him out. They intentionally neglect him. But who's projecting here? Because as we recall, Cody would neglect the kids of the wives he was fighting with. If he was rocky with a wife, if things in the marriage or in the relationship weren't easy and convenient for him, what did Cody do? Cody would distance from the kids. He would ignore the kids. He would neglect the kids as punishment, as a way to hurt his wives. He would hurt his kids emotionally by not being there 
to punish his wives he was angry at. Cody is very cruel. Cody is the one who plays games. Cody does things intentionally. He's intentionally manipulative. He treats his family that way. He treats people in general that way. Cody is cruel. Cody is manipulative. And he plays these psychotic punishment games. He's the one who gets paranoid. And then he expects that his family is hurting him on purpose. So Cody perceives things like Maddie keeping him away from her kids. Or Cody saying that his ex-wives and kids were acting like they were having more fun than him at the wedding just to hurt him. The rejection. All of that he takes as some kind of game. Like they're doing it intentionally to him. On purpose to hurt him. To punish him. His kids and ex-wives don't play that kind of game. They don't think that way. They're not sick in the head the way he is. Cody treats people that way. So he expects people to deal with him in that same disgusting way. He thinks everything is being done on purpose to hurt him. He is the victim. In Cody's paranoid, delusional, sick mind, it's all intentional cruelty, intentional punishment. When everyone really is just trying to heal, they're trying to find peace, they're trying to find their new normal, and they know Cody is not capable of giving them what they deserve from him, so they push him aside. It's not intentionally to punish him. They just distance from him because they know they're going to get burned and that Cody is incapable. Cody's unwell. Now, Cody is the one who intentionally punishes his kids. So he expects the same back from them. This is a war for him. This is a game for Cody. But he is the only one playing this game. He's playing by himself. It's sad. Cody really is his own victim. And he doesn't understand this is not a game for his kids. This is not a game for his ex-wives. They aren't playing a game with him. It's not a civil war to them. They aren't punishing him to be cruel. They genuinely are hurt. They don't trust Cody. They genuinely don't want to be around him. It's not intentional. It's not to hurt him. It's not to one-up him. It's that they know he will hurt them. They know he's not capable of giving them what they deserve. Cody is the only one fighting this invisible war. Everyone else is just trying to move forward and heal and survive. They're trying to find peace. But it's interesting that Cody is projecting his behavior on other people. He expects his family to deal with him the way he deals with them, as if they're playing a game. They're all trying to one-up each other when all they're really doing is establishing boundaries and they're moving on with their life. This is not a punishment for Cody. They genuinely want nothing to do with him, not to punish him because they don't even know who the fuck he is and they don't trust him. In my opinion, Cody is delusional. Cody is paranoid. Cody is mentally unstable. And in my opinion, Cody needs help major, major help. He's twisted. Hope and faith and all the time in the world aren't going to fix that. I really don't even think professional help would fix that. By the way, Cody saying he never said that he didn't love Janelle, that's not exactly true. If we recall the past tell-all when Cody was asked if he loved Janelle, if he was in love with her, Cody's response was that he deflected. He avoided the answer and he told the host to ask Janelle and he knew that Janelle will tell her that she wasn't in love with him, that she didn't love him. So Janelle says Cody has a narrative about Maddie, that she's a gossip. But she says Cody is a bigger gossip. And he would say to Janelle when they were married, oh, Mary was difficult or this or that about Christine. He would shit talk Mary. He would shit talk Christine. He would always talk shit about his other wives to Janelle. But never about Robin. It was never ever about Robin that he was complaining. Only Mary and Christine. So Cody is the biggest gossip of them all. Cody whines that there is all of this contempt that they have for him. And Robin tells Cody that she is having a really hard time with this. And Cody says he'll work, he'll reach out to, and he will love the kids who will allow him to do it. And he says in time... Maybe the rest of the kids will just come back around. So Cody will make an effort with the kids who kiss his ass, who make it convenient for him, who kiss the ring. But for the rest, it's on them to come around. It's on them to go to him. It's not on him as the father. And he isn't really going to make an effort unless he gets to be the hero.
Goblin looks even more unhappy than usual, even more miserable. She tells her best customer that with her bio kids, their bio dad didn't do what he should have as a dad. And her bio dad also didn't do what he should have as a dad. So Cody says he hasn't done that and he wasn't like that with his kids. Now, Robin explains that her parents got divorced when she was little. And her dad lived with one wife in another city and her mom lived alone. So Robin one day confronted her bio dad asking, well, what happened? Why weren't you there? Why weren't you around me? And her bio dad just made lame excuses about why he wasn't there for her when she was young. And Robin says the whole thing sucked and she still has issues with it. So Robin warns Cody that he doesn't want to be that guy. She knows he's hurting, but she warns him he doesn't want to be that guy. And Robin lets Cody know that she is really struggling with this. She's struggling to respect him. Now, Cody is full of excuses. It's always someone else's fault. It's never his fault. Now, Cody tells her he texted one kid who texted him back that he was a piece of trash and they would never speak to him again. And he says he was the one trying to text them to have a relationship with them and they rejected him. He's a piece of trash. They never wanted to speak to him again. Now, Cody, in my opinion, wants it easy, he wants it convenient, and he refuses to discuss any of his kids' issues with him. He won't do anything that he considers inconvenient. He won't do anything that would be critical of him. He won't have those discussions that might bruise his ego. And that's what the kids need. They need Cody to have those discussions, to take that accountability, even when it sucks for him, even when it's hard, even when it's negative. If the kids want to discuss their issues and they have anything critical to say, anything that bruises his ego, Cody takes that as an insult rather than being humble and taking accountability and validating his kids. So his kids refuse to deal with him. They never want to deal with him because he refuses to take accountability and they don't even recognize him anymore. So when Cody reaches out by text once a year, they're like, fuck you. Who the fuck are you? I don't want to deal with you. And I can understand why. Anytime they bring up their legit issues with him, Cody takes that as disrespect. He shuts down. He refuses to do anything unless it's sunshine and rainbows and little kittens. He doesn't want to have a conversation. If he can't be the hero, he's not interested in being a father. Robin tells Cody that he has to be persistent. He has to keep trying and trying and trying over time. He needs to work things out. And Cody says he isn't going to do that with rejection from his kids every time. You know, until Cody takes full accountability, all he will get from most of his kids is rejection. Cody is so weak. He is so fragile. He is so insecure. Think about it. He can cause all of this pain, all of this emotional suffering, all of this turmoil for his ex-wives and for his kids. And after he burns them and the kids stay away to protect themselves and to heal, when they want nothing to do with him, pathetic, ballless Cody can't handle going through repeated rejection to try and get somewhere with them, to try and open the doors, to try and open the communication. His ego can't take rejection and it hurts him. He's the victim, his pain, his betrayal. His anger, his rejection, he focuses on his emotions, but he never considers the world of hurt and pain his kids feel because of his neglect. Does Cody consider he caused so much scarring that the kids just don't trust him? They don't trust that they won't get burned by him? And you know, the only thing that will foster trust in these kids with him, the only thing that will make his kids feel safe, Cody always talks about wanting to feel safe. If he wants his kids to feel safe with him, the only thing that will make his kids feel safe is Cody humbling himself, Cody apologizing, and Cody taking accountability. And his ego is going to get bruised and bashed and dented in the process. He has to take it. It's amazing. He can hurt everyone around him and be destructive as fuck, but he can't handle it when the kids don't want to mess with him. They don't want to put the hands in the fire because they know they're going to get burned. Cody set hoops for everyone to jump through for his kids. He kept placing conditions on the relationships. He rejected anyone who wouldn't do what he dictated. He rejected anyone who refused to jump through his hoops. And now his kids are rejecting him for refusing to take accountability with them for that. And he sees himself as the victim when he rejected his family first. 
he burned it down. And now he wants to blame them for wanting nothing to do with him and his ego can't take it. But does Cody ever try to imagine the hurt he caused his kids, how unsafe he feels for his kids? Cody wants safety for himself, but he doesn't give a fuck about his kids feeling safe or he would have these hard conversations. Does Cody consider the repeated rejection the kids faced and the kids felt from their dad when he wasn't around? Does he remember Gabe and Garrison talking to him in the woods when they were begging to have relationships with him? He rejected them because they wouldn't bend the knee to his COVID rules and he iced them out. Does he understand that rejection from him as their father hurt them far worse than he thinks his ego hurts now? Cody is a very weak insecure coward of a man. He can't take the rejection from his kids, but he doesn't consider what neglecting his kids put them through emotionally, how much hurt it caused them. It's only all about his emotions, his rejections, his feelings of betrayal. Cody is very selfish, he's weak, and he's fragile as a bird. It's a really good thing that his kids take after their mothers. They took years of rejection and neglect from their dad, and we don't see them bitching and acting like victims the way Cody the coward is. This is pathetic. This is one of the most pathetic men I have ever seen. Cody tells Robin he isn't abandoning his children. They are the ones who have betrayed him. And Robin tells Cody that these are his kids, and Cody says they're not kids anymore, they're adults. So the kids are only adults when it suits Cody and his narrative. If the kids are mature, independent, free-thinking adults, then how is he then blaming the moms for influencing the kids? How is he blaming the moms for why his adult kids don't see them? If they are adults, he should also understand that as adults, their issues with their dad are separate from the issues he had in the past with his ex-wives. The issues the kids have with their dad are separate from the feelings they have about the way their dad treated their moms. But Cody refuses to see that. He says, oh, they're kids. The kids are influenced by their moms. So when he wants, they're weak-minded kids. And when he wants, they're independent adults who don't need him. Cody needs to go get fucked. Robin explains to Cody that whether they're adults or not, they are still his kids. And Cody says they have animosity and he doesn't want to talk to people who have so much contempt for him. So Robin tells Cody that his kids need him. And Cody says his kids can have him, but they don't need to treat him like crap to get him. So it's okay for Cody to treat Mary and Janelle and Christine like crap. It's okay for him to treat all of his kids like crap, but it's not okay for anyone to ask him to take accountability. Then it becomes labeled that they're bullying him and they're treating him like crap. Cody again insists that his kids are purposefully leaving him out of their lives to punish him for a crime that he did not commit. Again, that's not true, but Cody is projecting. Cody intentionally would neglect his kids when he was angry at their mom. He would distance from the kids and not come around. He neglected his kids to punish their moms. So what crime then did his kids commit to deserve that from their dad? That's what I want to know. He says the experience with COVID and the three divorces and the breakup of the family with the different directions and all the secrecy, all of this upheaval, all of this damage, tearing them apart, with all of this, Cody doesn't know how they fix it or when they fix it or whether they fix it at all. Cody's in victim mode and he says the kids want to sit down with him and they want to blame him for everything that happened. It's on Cody. If Cody wants to fix this, Cody needs to humble himself and take accountability. And he needs to accept a lot of negativity before things get better. It's not going to be easy. He's not going to be the hero who the sun shines out of his ass. That's never going to happen. This is all on Cody. Cody intentionally pushed out his wives because he didn't want to be the guy who called it. He was toxic intentionally. He was manipulative. He was neglectful very intentionally to push the wives to leave him. Cody neglected his kids in the process as well, and he is accountable for it. Cody can be delusional, he can be paranoid, but Cody's thoughts and perceptions and assessments of this situation don't jive with reality. Cody caused this. 
Cody needs to take accountability. Cody refuses to take accountability and his kids refuse to move forward with him in their relationships with him unless he owns his mistakes. And Cody refuses. He is still finger pointing like a toddler in a terrible two tantrum. And his kids were all raised to own their choices, to own their mistakes. And they expect and they deserve their dad to do the same with them. Cody refuses to make an effort. He refuses to humble himself. And until he does, his kids won't respect him. They won't want anything to do with him. They see a coward in the place of the man they thought was their father. And they don't recognize this ballless wonder. They don't know their dad. They don't trust their dad. They don't recognize their dad. Cody did a lot of damage. He caused a lot of hurt. He inflicted a lot of scars. And he needs to own it. He expects this to be convenient. He wants this to be easy. He wants an ego feast. He wants his ass kissed. He wants his ugly ring kissed. And he hopes that in time with faith and hope, things will change. But what he needs to do is make effort. He needs to humble himself. He needs to take real, actual accountability. And when his kids come to him with issues, with criticisms, he needs to not take that as disrespect. He needs to validate them. He needs to take accountability. That's the only way to move forward and have relationships with his kids. Now, Cody complains that his kids want to blame him and that there is no respect. The kids being critical of their dad, confronting him about the issues, wanting him to take accountability, that is not disrespect at all. Cody views it as disrespect because he wants to be the hero and he's too weak to handle having an adult conversation with his kids and taking it as an adult-to-adult -adult conversation. He feels like anything that's critical of him, as a father in the family, he takes it as disrespect. That's his problem, but that's not what it is. It's not disrespectful. Now, Robin tells Cody that she is having a very hard time feeling like she is losing respect for him. And she's really trying to be careful. She's trying to walk on eggshells, but she also wants to be honest with him. And Cody just tells Robin to join the club. He asks Robin if she knows something he did wrong besides not falling madly in love with their mothers. That has nothing to do with this, but Cody wants to make it about that so that he can deflect and not handle the real issues. Robin tells Cody that there are two sides to all of it, and she tells him she knows he wasn't perfect in those marriages. Neither were his ex-wives. She knows that. And Cody says... Every kid who shut him out is blaming him or her even for what happened. And Cody thinks it's crap. Robin says it's misguided. And Cody doesn't want to have to sit with his kids to defend Robin. It's not about defending Robin. It's not about the fact that the kids are upset that he wasn't madly in love with their moms as the way he was with Robin. It's not about that at all. That's all bullshit and excuses because Cody doesn't want to deal with the fact that he neglected his kids. He doesn't want to face it head on. He doesn't want to take accountability for being a shitbag. Christine went on a first date with David. She is gushing about him. They've been talking for a month. They met on a dating site for people with kids. And she met him for the first time. She went on the first date. She loves David's eyes. She's gushing about him. They had a really good first date. They talked a lot. They're going to have a second date, so Christine is really excited about it. Janelle, on the other hand, isn't interested in dating. She was married to Cody for 30 years, and she says Cody is complicated. He's a complicated man, and she says there was a lot of what Robin would call the roller coaster ride, and Janelle is sick of the roller coaster. Janelle doesn't want to do that anymore. She doesn't want the roller coaster ride she doesn't want the up and down emotions. She doesn't want the walking on eggshells. She just wants to do herself and focus on herself and pursue her own things. She does what she wants. She has her own schedule, however she wants it to be. She travels where she wants and she loves it. She's having fun and it's easy and exciting. She likes her life the way it is and she likes doing whatever she wants to do. Now, Christine says David is a real man, of course, and it must be refreshing to be with a man with some balls. He's very into his family. He has eight kids. Christine told David she has six kids, and she's going to tell David 
about Janelle and Janelle's kids, and she really wants to claim all of the kids in the family. So it killed her. It hurt her to say she just had six kids. So on the next date, Christine is going to tell David that she's a polygamist and she claims Janelle's kids. She claims Janelle and she wants to make it clear to David from the start that she plans on doing things with Janelle and Janelle's kids for the rest of her life. She wants David to know that. She wants David to be comfortable with that. Back to the Cody and Robin bullshit. At Robin's house, Robin says she doesn't want to judge Cody, but she feels like you have to let your kid know you are there. If she were Cody, she would be calling, she would be emailing, she would be texting. She might even show up and fly out to wherever his kids are. She would do whatever it takes, whatever it takes, camp out on their doorstep, whatever, to show them, I will be here, I'm going to be here. Now, Cody says... Every kid who shut him out blames him or Robin for what happened. And he's not good with that. And Cody asks Robin if he should just let those kids call Robin whatever names they want. So in my opinion, Cody wants Robin to think the kid's whole issue is with her, about them hating her and that they're disrespectful of her. And then that's what causes the issues so that then she will back off in pushing him to make efforts to communicate with them. And then he can say it's because they blame him, it's because they disrespect her, when really it's not about that. This is not really all about Robin. This is about Cody and Cody refusing to take accountability with his kids for his bad behavior, for his neglect. Cody wants to make this more about Robin, so Robin stops pushing him as if his relationships are all bad because he has to constantly defend her to his kids against mad disrespect from his kids. His kids just want their dad to take accountability for his neglect and toxicity and his emotionally abusive behavior and how it hurt them. This isn't really about Robin. Now, Robin tells Cody if the kids mention her to tell them to talk to her because she was willing to talk and she wants to work it out with any of the kids who have an issue with her. She doesn't mind talking about those issues. Instead of this being about Cody taking accountability for his bad behavior and neglect with his kids, Cody wants to make this about the disrespect towards Robin and the hatred towards Robin. Cody says he doesn't know where the hate for Robin came from. And if he can't protect Robin from it, then he won't engage it. He says Robin never did anything to his kids and he doesn't know what they are complaining about. Cody is really deflecting, in my opinion, from owning his own bad behavior with his kids. He's making the issue about Robin when the issue really is about him taking accountability. Now, Cody says he just loved Robin, but he didn't love the other mothers. And the guilt lies there. The issue in Cody's mind is that the kids are mad that Cody only loved Robin and he wasn't really in love with their moms. And that's where the guilt lies. That's not the case. Cody's deflecting. I really don't think that the kids cared about their moms having these huge romantical love stories with their dad. I think they just wanted to see Cody give equal time and investment with all of their moms and with all of their siblings, and they wanted to see their moms respected. They wanted respect themselves too, and they wanted to see Cody respect their moms the way he respected Robin. It's not about love or having this big love affair. This is about Cody as a plural husband and father signing up to do things fairly and equally and then picking a favorite wife and kids. And then he intentionally pushed the wives out, investing less, giving everything to Robin. Robin got most of Cody's investment, time, effort, communication while he neglected the rest of his kids, and their moms. It's not about that Cody loved Robin more than them. It's about Cody being cruel with intention. It's about Cody being unfair. It's about Cody being selfish. It's about Cody being disrespectful and all the hurt it caused. This has nothing to do with the fact that Cody had a romantic love with Robin. Nobody cares. Nobody is jealous of Cody's love for Robin. Cody makes it about that when he wants to deflect and ignore taking his own accountability about how he failed as a plural husband and father. This isn't about hate for Robin. 
This isn't about Cody loving Robin and not his ex-wives. This is about Cody and his emotionally abusive, toxic behavior. This is about his neglect to his kids and the hurt and emotional suffering his behavior caused his kids. They want Cody to acknowledge it. They want to know he feels it. They want to know he sees it. They want to know he understands what he caused, that he feels the weight of that pain, and that he is sorry and instead, he is still deflecting, refusing to admit the myriad of ways he fucked up the way he let his kids down majorly. Cody's a coward. Cody is pathetic. Cody's obtuse. And, you know, maybe with time and all of his hope and faith, he will see one day that he is the problem. So Robin tells Cody she knows that he is having a really hard time with this. She really doesn't want to pile on. She knows that he's going through a lot. She sees him struggling. She sees how angry he is. And she herself is dealing with her own grief about this. So Robin tells Cody he really needs to get this. He needs to try harder. He needs to get the gravity of this. She needs him to get this. So Cody tells her he's decided at her beckoning he will make the effort. He says he spent a year lamenting the situation and when he gets over all the loss, the kids who are open to him will get his attention at that point when he's ready. Now, Robin asks if Cody could do a little communication at least to at least let the kids know everything is still open. They can reach out to him. Now, Cody immediately points his finger at Robin and he mentions that at the wedding, he tried to connect with Maddie. Maddie rejected him. Now, Robin asks Cody if he has been trying to communicate with his kids. And Cody says he tried with Gabe. Now, he tried with Hunter, but he got contempt back. This is going to take a lot more than texts and phone calls. I hope Cody knows that. Next, Cody plays victim some more, focusing on his broken heart, not the broken hearts he caused in his whole family. Now, Cody says he has a broken heart over these people who have shut him out, and they aren't talking to him. And Cody wonders what he did wrong to deserve this. He still doesn't know. He probably never will. Robin tells Cody that divorce is hard on everyone. Divorce is hard on kids. Separation is hard on kids too. And Cody says it's a total betrayal to him. And it's not about the divorces. He isn't even talking about the relationships with their mothers. He just feels betrayed. So Robin says... They're getting caught in it. The kids are getting caught into it. And they are getting fed information that isn't true. They're getting fed one-sided information from their mothers. So now Robin is blaming the bad relationships again on this bullshit narrative that the moms are influencing and manipulating the kids against their dad. It's bullshit. Now, Cody tells Robin they can be mad at their moms in a decade when they realize what's going on and they decide they want a relationship with him, when they figure out just how one-sided it all is. Again, Cody's delusional. Cody's kids aren't going to be calling him. He will be calling them. And even in a decade, they probably still won't answer him unless Cody grows up, unless Cody gets help for his loose screws and takes full accountability with them. Now, Robin tells Cody that his kids need him in their life. And Cody says they can have them. All they have to do is call him. They need to go to him. No, he should be going to them. He better not hold his breath for that. Cody feels all the kids have to do is answer when he calls without having total contempt for him. And he says this argument, this disparity in the relationships with his kids is specifically in his mind because of of shit talk. He thinks the kids were poisoned against him because of all the shit talking. So we're still going back to bullshit and deflection and delusion. He says there is this whirlwind of disappointment from the family breaking up and they all blame dad. They say things like dad screwed up. And Cody says he did screw up. He says he gave up. He gave up on love because it wasn't enough love. And he is pretty sure they will say it's all dad's fault. Cody says his kids can blame him. He's fine, but he just doesn't want them to bring contempt to their conversation. 
Cody doesn't want any contempt from his kids, but Cody stews in resentment every second he is on screen. If Cody is so hateful and bitter and angry and resentful on camera, just imagine off camera when he tries to communicate with his kids what kind of bullshit they receive from him. And all of it fueled by his delusion and paranoia and deflection. It will never work with Cody and his kids until Cody straightens out his mind until he gets a handle on his emotions. He needs to get professional help, in my opinion. He obviously has very little grasp on reality. He doesn't get the amount of damage he caused and how deep the cuts are to his children, how deeply they're hurting from his direct toxicity and neglect. Cody should be able to accept and validate how his kids feel. He should be able to talk to them about their contempt about their feelings, whether it's negative for him or inconvenient for him or not, whether it feeds his ego or not. Cody only wants relationships with his kids if his ego gets fed. If it's anything truthful, if it's anything critical of him, he refuses it as disrespect. He refuses it as contempt and he refuses to validate his kids. His kids need to be validated by him. Even if it crushes his ego in the process, it's really time for Cody to humble himself. Instead of prioritizing his pain and his emotions and the betrayal he feels, he needs to prioritize how his kids feel ahead of himself. If Cody wants his kids respect, if he wants his kids to respect him, he needs to put on his big boy panties and take accountability. Cody doesn't seem to want real relationships. He only wants fantasy land relationships where his ass gets kissed and he can do no wrong and he is this perfect hero whose ego gets fed. He isn't willing to be inconvenienced to listen to his children, to allow his children to give an inventory of how he affected them. He isn't willing to acknowledge his mistakes. Criticism from his kids isn't disrespect. Cody takes anything that isn't an ego feast as contempt, as disrespect. When the reality is, it's just honesty and hard truths that Cody refuses to accept from his kids. Because if he accepts them, he will feel like the sack of shit that he is. Cody can't handle what he deems as contempt, but he can sure dish it out. Like, of course, the way he talked about Mary for years. Cody seems to think that it's okay to seethe in contempt, to shit talk his ex-wives, to shit talk his kids to oblivion. But Cody can't stand the shit being talked about him or the contempt coming his way because of the way he treated these people in his family. How does Cody think his ex-wives and kids have felt over the years hearing the shit that spews out of his mouth? They are all strong enough to take it. They all take it. But when it comes back on Cody, his balls shrivel up. Why is it? Why is it that this man is such a coward? Cody is angry and he says if someone opens up to him and they tell him how they really feel about him, he knows he's so triggered that he will lash out. So he tells Robin he can't even get it straight with her right now. And he makes excuses that this takes time and he still hasn't gotten over everything himself. He hasn't gotten over what has happened and how he has been treated. Cody is the victim, guys. Again, Cody thinks in his sick mind that he was mistreated. He is the victim because in my opinion, he is probably has something going on upstairs. This isn't about Cody. This is about his family. This is about his kids' emotions. This isn't about him. But Cody always coddles himself. He always puts himself first, even ahead of his kids, the lives he created, ahead of their emotional suffering, ahead of their emotional well-being. That's how selfish and immature Cody is. Robin tells Cody to figure it out because it's hard on her. It's hard on all the kids. And Cody says when the time is right, he thinks he will finally be forgiving. He hopes at least that he will be able to be forgiving. He doesn't know what it will take to get him in a forgiving mode. No one owes Cody an apology at all. Cody owes his kids and ex-wives apologies. They will be the ones who will need to forgive him and find their forgiving spirit when and if they can. You know, I can't believe this asshat thinks he needs to forgive them as if he is the victim who was wronged. 
You know, this guy really is the world's biggest loser. I don't know how anybody can respect him. Robin doesn't know what to do. So Robin suggests that Cody gets on his knees, that he prays, that he asks God for help. Cody says he's desperate and he knows it takes more than that. He says it will take a change of heart with him to be able to do this. He says it's so complicated. He can't make sense of it. When he goes to God, there's a wall up for him. Cody says he has lost his religion. He's completely lost his faith. So Robin feels like Cody was a present dad in many ways, and that's what made her fall for Cody, seeing how present he was with his kids. So Robin says at this point, Cody is so hurt by some of his children's rejection, and he's hurt by the kids' anger towards him. She says Cody really feels like he was there for his kids, and he wants to know why they are drastically rejecting him now because in his mind, it doesn't fit what has happened. It totally fits what has happened. This man emotionally abused, neglected, manipulated, and behaved toxically and cruelly with his kids and their moms. He was absent for years as Robin and her kids got full investment and effort from Cody. Robin is enabling Cody to blame the wives for influencing the kids against him when she should be pushing him to take full accountability for his toxic behavior and neglect. That's what she should be doing. Now, Cody asks Robin if she has known anybody ever who has gone through three divorces in one or two years. He's a victim. No one's ever been through this before. He's a victim, guys. He's betrayed. So at this, Robin rolls her eyes. She says no, and she looks really fed up. So Cody tells Robin that he's not looking for her pity. He is looking for understanding from her. Robin tells Cody that she is understanding. She is giving him understanding. And Cody points out that she just said she's losing respect for him. And Cody asks if she's feeling that way because of her own experience with her biological father. Cody says he hasn't betrayed his kids. So at this point, Robin breaks down a little and she says she knows how much she needed her dad, her biological dad. Her whole life was absent. He didn't fight for the relationship. He didn't care to have a relationship with her. He still doesn't care to have a relationship with her. But she sees him every now and then and he says he loves her, but he's always been very absent and he still is. And it's a big point of hurt for her and she doesn't want that to happen to Cody's kids. So Cody says the kids who are mad at him get together and they're all colluding against him. Cody says it's a betrayal and he has days where he wants to talk about it. Robin says they are hurting their whole family is in pieces. The kids are in pain. They don't know how it's going to work out. And Robin explains to Cody that it's very hard for them. And she asks Cody if he sees that, if he sees how hurt the kids are, if he sees how difficult this is for them. And Cody says he sees that he can be forgiving of it. You know, Cody needs to ask for forgiveness. No one did anything for him to forgive. Cody has some serious issues. Now, Robin tells Cody that separation and divorce are very tough. People drag their kids into it. It's very hard. It's complicated. Kids can get very mixed up in their heads. So Cody asks Robin what she wants him to do. He says he already reached out to them. They rejected him. Robin doesn't want to judge Cody, but she doesn't think Cody should accept this. She thinks Cody should be doing whatever it takes. He should be camping out on his kids' doorsteps, asking to talk on repeat, she says, sometimes you have to do that when you care. You have to ask to talk. So Robin tells Cody that his kids really need him. They need him in their lives. And Robin also says his kids need him and she knows they're angry, but they need him bottom line. And so Cody asks Robin to give him enough time and space with this without losing respect for him as he takes the time he needs. So Robin tells him she'll do that. And Cody tells Robin she has to understand that it boggles his mind that he is being punished for a crime he never committed. And Robin says that the kids don't understand that. Cody asks Robin if the kids think he did something wrong. And Robin says yes. And Cody wonders what they think he did. 
He asks Robin, I didn't love their mother. Is that it? And Robin says that it's anything the kids have been told. There were lots of misunderstandings during COVID. And she says that some of the kids think Cody did the COVID rules just because he wanted to be at Robin's house with her instead of with them. And that's why they made the rules. Robin says she knows it's ridiculous, but that's how they feel. Now, Cody says during COVID, he made two huge mistakes. He says he wanted the boys to move out because they couldn't comply with the COVID rules. And he admits that became a foolish power game. Cody also admits that the second mistake he made was not going to Isabel's surgery. And he says that put bad blood between a bunch of them. Instead of saying it on TV, Cody should be apologizing directly to Isabel and Gabe and Garrison. I wonder if Cody ever got the chance to apologize to Garrison. I wonder if Cody ever took accountability with Garrison. Cody better understand that he needs to take accountability real quick, real fast, because tomorrow isn't promised. This isn't going to be a situation where in a decade it'll just be okay. He needs to do it now while he can. Robin tells Cody that in plural marriage, it's tough. It can get really confusing for the wives and the kids when it comes to the husband and the father. Sometimes the kids or another wife can think someone is more important or more loved. And Robin knows that Cody loves all of his kids. She says she knows that. And she says in plural marriage, it's difficult for a dad to get one-on-one -on -one time with his kids. He has to be really present, but it's still really difficult just because of math and because of time. That's a bullshit excuse. It's not really difficult. Cody was able to take an almost two week honeymoon one on one time with Robin, the love of his life, no problem. If Cody really wanted to take one on one time, he could make the time just like he could make the time to take Robin to her bucket list honeymoon. He could make the time to spend time with his kids. All it would have taken from Cody is doing his best to give each wife and her kids fair and equal time, and there would be less of these issues and less of the kids feeling so neglected. So that's on Cody, no one else. So Robin feels it's natural for the kids in polygamous families to become closer to their mothers because their mothers are always around. So Cody mentions to Robin how last week he was skiing, it was sunny, and he was having fun, so he decided to text Gabe. He reached out to Gabe to show him these beautiful slopes, and he hasn't heard back yet. You know, does Cody ever consider if all of these people, if majority of my kids have a problem with me and want nothing to do with me and won't even respond to me, maybe I'm the problem, maybe it's not them that's the problem, does he ever consider that? Does he ever consider that maybe it's tone deaf and selfish to send photos of him having a great time when he should be there making an effort to take accountability with his kids while he still has the time, while he still has the chance? Robin tells Cody to keep trying. She's glad to hear he's trying. She wants him to try harder. Cody says he knows he doesn't try enough because he says it's not safe to go there. He's not in a safe place emotionally. He's triggering like crazy. He's very triggered, triggering all the time, and he doesn't want to get in a fight. He doesn't want to get in a conversation and have a fight with his kids where he becomes triggered and it causes a situation when they mention his issues with him. So Cody is so angry about what has happened and he is worried that if he talks to his kids, they will trigger him with one of their accusations. So Cody says at this time, he really doesn't have the bandwidth yet to go to God in gratitude to fill his love tank with the spirit of God so that he's able to do this. He is bitter right now and that's all he feels. Resentment and bitterness. Cody admits he's just too hot-headed now and he knows if he goes and he tries to do this now, once the kids start having a conversation with him, once they make their accusations, he's going to get triggered, he's going to go off, and he doesn't want to do any more damage. So Robin just wants to know that Cody is trying. She says these relationships need to get mended. Why doesn't Robin advise Cody to go get help to get his emotions in check? because it's time for him to prioritize the emotions of his children and address the issues they have with him. It's time for him to take accountability and prioritize his children above himself and his bad mental state. He needs to get that fixed. That's on him. His kids deserve much better than this. Cody doesn't really wanna focus on his kids. 
Cody tells Robin they've had such a struggle with this in their marriage. Cody would rather take time to get in a better place between himself and Robin in their marriage. He wants to focus on Robin and their marriage. He says he's been in this place for a long time and it's hurt them more. It's hurt his relationship with Robin. It's hurt he and Robin more than it's hurt his kids or the rest of the family. So Cody thinks his relationship with Robin is hurting more than all of his kids combined and all the damage in the family. Cody can go get fucked. I can't believe he wonders why his kids don't answer him back. I can't believe it's a question for him even. Robin appreciates that and Cody says... He didn't mean for all of this to come out on Robin, but his heart is broken. He says he is with the person he loves most in the world, and his heart is still broken. And he asks Robin what he should do with that. And Robin tells Cody her heart is broken too. Oh, pity them. Their hearts are broken. They're victims. They're victims. Cody points out the angel Robin is. He says Robin reacts with the sweet emotion that she has but he is angry. He is angry out of his mind. And Robin says, in these situations with divorce, the kids are always a collateral damage. Cody says he isn't trying to damage his kids. And Robin asks Cody to please keep trying with them. And here Cody points out another excuse. He says, one kid told him that he's an asshole and he is never talking to him again. And this kid told Cody he manipulated him and he brainwashed him. He never wants to talk to him. So it's understandable, of course. Now, Cody says some people think parental child relationships don't have to be reciprocal. But when kids are adults, Cody thinks they do. And he points out he isn't reaching out to his kids forever. He is willing to make the effort for now. But he says somebody else will have to be on the other end of that and make effort too. He's not going to be camping out on anybody's doorstep. He's had about enough of this. His heart is really in it, guys. He really wants these relationships with his kids. And nobody is going to even pick up on the other end until Cody stops pitting himself and being the world's biggest victim. When Cody starts taking accountability and prioritizing his kids over himself, then they will be willing to talk to him. Cody talks about it's not safe for him. It's not safe for him. How the fuck does he think his kids feel? It's not going to feel safe for his kids until Cody is willing to have those tough conversations and take accountability. Now, Cody tells Robin he really needs space. He isn't planning on fixing this with his kids anytime soon. Well, time should be of the essence for Cody. With one of his kids, he'll never be able to work it out. Cody needs to understand the way his behavior emotionally affects his children. So Cody's willing to try with the kids who are reaching out to him, the kids who are listening to him. So Robin wants Cody to promise he will keep trying a little bit at least until he is fully ready to get into this with his kids. So Cody promises he'll try a little bit. You could tell he's not going to do shit. He's just appeasing Robin. And Robin says to do a little bit to let his kids know at least that he still cares, at least that the door is open, that he'll always care. So Robin again explains that his kids need him, and she says Cody also needs his kids. Robin says the kids really need their dad, and they need their dad to try harder. Robin doesn't think Cody is trying hard enough. Robin says that Cody's role is he's a dad, and she doesn't think Cody realizes how important that is. He doesn't grasp how important a dad is to a child. For once, Robin's right. Cody doesn't grasp how important a dad is to a child. Cody doesn't grasp how important it is to be present as a father connected to all of his kids. That's true. Cody's kids all deserve better. You never get to choose your parents. You don't get to choose who you're born to. And they deserve much better than this from their father. And it's really sad that Cody doesn't see the importance of these relationships with his kids and how it's important for him to prioritize them, these lives he created with their moms over himself. That does it for this episode. I'll be back next week with the next episode of Sister Wives, Season 19, Episode 5. It should be a really good episode. 
Gabe mentions in that episode that he thinks Robin has a victim complex and Gabe is right. Thanks for listening, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.